Former President Trump's allies have been showing up to support him in his New York City criminal trial. South Carolina Senator Tim Scott and North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum speaking on his behalf, and they just happen to be on his rumored short list for vice president. Let's bring in Carl Rowe, Fox News contributor and former White House Deputy Chief of Staff. Carl, we'll get to veep stakes in just a second, but I wanted to get your reaction to the fact that it looks like there are indeed going to be presidential debates June 27th and September the 10th. Well, I'm not surprised that uh, there are going to be debates, but I am surprised that uh, Vice President Biden woke up to the fact that he was looking like he was trying to avoid debates. And if there mm -hmm. had not been debates, whoever uh, the American public held responsible for the for the absence of the debates would suffer in the polls. Uh, he's finding his numbers bad enough already and probably decided I'd better step up and, and look like I'm, I'm, I'm eager to debate. Uh, and it's going to be wild. I think it's going to be one one part of this is going to be very useful for the American people. I think Bill McGurn was absolutely right. The American people want to see these two men in a debate. And it's going to be a debate uh, that's sort of retro. It's back to mm. 1960. We're going to have a studio with a moderator, maybe a couple yep. of press people, a couple of executives and the crew that's running the show and no audience, which I think I, I wrote a couple of weeks ago in my Wall Street Journal column, I thought that would be a distinct improvement. The, the audience has turned these into performance and the American people lose the serious conversation that they can have uh, between a moderator and, or moderators yeah. and the two candidates uh, when we have all this, the shenanigans going on that happen when you have a gigantic audience. Similarities to 1960, Nixon, JFK, but I don't think either one of the candidates will be using easy shave. Instead, no, they of will actually, not. instead of actually using a razor. You exactly. got to be old. You got to be really old to get that reference. Hey, I want to talk to you about the veep sticks and who makes the most sense. I mean, I look at it. I think Rubio would help him with Latino voters. Scott helps him with black voters. Bergam serves as a temperamental counterweight to Trump. Christy Nome was in the running until that book came out. But Nikki Haley seems to me to make the most sense to him. I mean, recent primaries. Yesterday, Maryland and, North, and Nebraska held primaries. She got 20% of the vote in Maryland, 18% in Nebraska. On the 7th, she got 22% of the vote in Indiana and 16% of the vote back on April the 23rd in Pennsylvania. Carl, she is still in the running, but she's been out of the race since March. Yeah, and if you look at the suburbs, like, for example, in Maryland, she got more than a third of the vote in the suburbs of Washington, D.C., uh, and if you look at Nebraska, also last night, you'll you'll see that in Omaha and its suburbs, uh, Douglas and Sarpy counties, and Lancaster, Lincoln, which is a college-educated mm -hmm. audience, uh, she ran uh, a better than a quarter of the vote, and she's been out of the race for you know going on two months. But look, let's step back for a minute. What is the purpose of the vice presidential candidate? Maybe it's to unite the party. Maybe it's to mm -hmm. appeal to a special group. Maybe it's to uh, you know uh, add some uh, some patina to the to the pres to the presidential candidate. But I'll tell you, I've been moved by a bo book called "Do Running Mates Matter" by two young academics who marshal every bit of data to l examine what really matters, and they find only one thing matters from a political perspective, and that is what does the vice presidential candidate to do to reinforce the image of the presidential candidate as being a good president. That is to say, if you pick somebody whom people say, well, that'd be, you know, the vice presidential running mate, I'm Ronald Reagan. He picks his principal pr opponent in the primaries, mm -hmm. who's been ambassador to the UN, ambassador to, to China, CIA director and a respected member of Congress. And people conclude George W. Bush's appointment says things about Ronald Reagan. He's a strong, confident leader who will unite his party. On the other hand, John McCain picks Sarah Palin and literally the dimensions that we rate McCain on with regard to judgment drop. So the, the point of the two authors is pick the person who most, the, who most Americans will look at and immediately say, well, you know what? That person has the ability to be president if something bad happens to the, to the head of the ticket. There also seems to be another aspect included in this calculation, according to an anonymous Trump ally who talked to Fox News, who said Trump and his team are paying close attention to who is activating their donor networks on behalf of the former president. They're less interested in who shows up to events with pre-existing Trump donors and more interested in seeing who is bringing new donors into the fold. And by that calculus, it's Nikki Haley. Well, again, th th this is maybe a short-term interest in their part, but the point of the point that I'm making is it will have little to no effect on the ultimate outcome of the election. Maybe Doug Burgum, who's been a very successful business guy, shows up with a couple of million dollars more than you know, fill in the blank, you know, Marco Rubio. But at the end of the day, what really mm -hmm. matters in terms of winning the election is 
do the American people look at the choice and say that was a presidential decision worthy yeah. of the person that we want to put into the Oval Office? Hey, I need just a real quick answer for this, uh, Carl, because we're running out of time. There's a chance that the running mate is going to go literally from the Republican convention into a vice presidential debate with Kamala Harris. Who is best equipped to do that? Uh, almost anybody who's a quality pick would do would do well in a debate with Kamala Harris. She is one of the worst public speakers I think I've ever seen, and uh, you know they're, they're, they 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 don't need to be prepared. They'll need to be given a lot of research material to absorb at their rate. But uh, the Republican nominee for vice president, if it's a good pick, is going to find themselves in, in performing well in a debate. She is not a great debater. All right, Carl Rove for us. Carl, thank you so much. Appreciate it.